I was in pretty bad way coming up to the final months before the Hoka Hay. Sitting at 120,000 miles on my dresser, I was sure the old Black Pearl wasn't making the trip. And I had no way to get a new bike, so I did the only thing I could. I asked my friends for help. Thankfully, Bert and Lisa from Baker understand that I'm a riding idiot and will support people who do actually pound out the miles, so they agreed to update my stock <laughs> transmission with a new Baker DD6 six-speed. What's up, dude? I need some pop. This was great because of the many things I love about the new model Harley-Davidson's, the six-speed is at the top of that list. So after a quick stop at Pat from Led Sled's house for a nap and a dash, I was in Michigan to visit the Baker facility and pick up the new goodies. The staff was in full gear, James Simonelli manning the sales floor and the techs going at it with Bert in his R&D facility just next door. I wasn't sure if anyone was going to have the time to squeeze me in for this job, but Trish had already thought of that and had arranged for me to take the new parts down to her old man's place in Plymouth. Evan is his name and he's the owner and operator of Plymouth Cycle and Speed. Together with Tim O'Hara, the two would double team my scoot and get it done toot sweet. I pulled up in front of Evan's joint and before I knew it, the Pearl was inside on the rack and apart. These cats do installs for Baker on the road, so they really know their way in and out of it. This was a bonus since we had done the DD6 install article before, but this time around, we were privy to a few inside tricks from the guys who do it all the time. We wanted to pass these along to our readers, as this video tick tip really shows those tricks well. Of course, it goes without mentioning that before you start any procedure like this, you should have a service manual on hand to check each step. Evan shown here doing the basic disassembly of the primary side. Once he removes the inner primary and the sprockets, we get down to the meat of the transmission work. Kind of like standard pipe and then they bend, pre bend them and In this step, Evan uses Baker's tool number TOLB-56 to remove the inner primary bearing race. He explained that the stock race is the source of most primary leak. It's, a, it's, it's, high. it's actually <laughs> causes most inner primary leaks. Um, just the bushing that fits on the main shaft that fits the seal in the inner primary. We end up replacing it with a high torque fairing. This idea of this bearing is machined to the OD of the main shaft of the trans. We eliminate a part, a moving part that's literally just pressed on to a certain depth and then green lock tight and hope it doesn't slide. So this eliminates any chance of leaking to this pushing doesn't drive into the gear. At the same time on the other side of the bike, Tim has already removed the pipes and floorboard and is onto the top and side cover of the transmission. Like I said, these two go at it like a well-oiled machine, and it wasn't too long at all before we were ready to gut the tranny. A few taps from Evan's side, and the stock gear cluster slides right out, all in one unit. From this angle, you can see all that's left is the main drive gear, which now needs to be pressed out of the case. This was where we learned the Baker method for safe removal. <laughs> Believe it or not, the bearing land for the main drive gear is so thin on stock cases, a lot of times a little bit of rust in there and you end up with a cracked case. Yeah, that'll work. The main drive gear now has to be pressed out of the main drive gear bearing, which is in the case. These cases are notorious for being weak on the bearing land. It's a very small land. If a bike's been washed a lot or ridden through the rain, rust will build up inside here. And you have to put so much pressure on this gear to try to push it out of the bearing that the cases will break. Um, so Bert actually one day during an install trip figured out a way to break the cage of this bearing, which takes off the pressure of it. And then we can actually once we get all the ball bearings lined up, we can hit the gear down and it shatters the bearing and separates it and it takes all the pressure off the land. So then the gear just falls out and we put and pop the outer part of the bearing off. Because it's got a plastic cage, it's very easy to just to break it. The Baker bearing actually is, has a full metal cage so you can't break it, but with the factory one, while installing this you can do it.
And there is a tool to press this out. Um, but you don't think about it. But the first time you break one. <laughs> This shot really shows how thin the bearing land is. You can imagine how easy it is to break the case. So here we are, old parts, new parts. Ready to upgrade this puppy to a nice, comfortable six speed. <laughs> because with the iPhone, like you can have, you know, what we're trying to tell people is like, you know, if you have this, yeah, you can run your iPod and have your music, but, you know, and it charges the device and all that. This well, dowel pin is gonna, come out it's probably going to end up staying in the old trans so you have to hit it out of the old transmission you're going to reuse it on it before you put the new trans in for good you're going to want to test fit it without any gaskets without the six gear in you're going to get it in put it in neutral and just spin the main shaft if all the gears spin then you're good okay. um, worst case scenario you might hit a gear right in here a little bit of grinding on the case and that's all you'd ever have to do to it no case modification other than that then you can put the dowel pin back in, put the gaskets on, and the trans will go in. Cool. So before we go any further, they install the new six-speed cluster, put the transmission in neutral, and make sure that everything's going to spin freely. Yeah. The cool thing is, like with this, you can have 160 gear. Six hours. With that test complete, the new gear cluster comes out and we're ready to install the final drive gear bearing and the new six-speed gear set. Are you going to be working? Okay, just do it and drop your pants. What? Yeah, you heard me. It's just the interview. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just hearing me. I'm prepared for you. Mm. It's going to go good. Yeah. Quad seal inside, shifter shaft seal, um, new shifter paw, clip, washer, and here's the new paw adjuster, which once we get the forks in, we'll do the full adjustment of it. Stock spacer is going to go in, beveled edge in. Tape in. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> now, the drum. When it's in neutral, you can hold the main shaft and spin six gear. It's basically that one spot up to first, the high side right there, compared to the two deeps, so I want you to know you're in neutral. Okay. Want me to hold that? Tony's fly women in from around the country and it's it's usually followed up by a monetary agreement but <laughs> <laughs> well, they do give discounts so, I mean. so okay i'm gonna tell you the story we go to bar yes please there's pee everywhere <laughs> Where the two forks sit over the two pins. Yep. By turning this, we can adjust that back and forth. You want that to be directly even in between the two of them. The other thing is you want to make sure that when you turn this clockwise, this goes to the right. Clockwise, clockwise, what's the left? Because it will work upside down. And if you're doing it, the opposite, it'll go opposites. It will still work in this position, but sometimes it will hit. And you'll get bad shifts so so once you get it even by eye you want to take the tension off of it not all the spring tension but just the free play out of it and that's where you're going to take just a measurement off of there 